Hey, what's up guys? So this is gonna be my tutorial on how I edit and mix my vocals. Um, first question that I get the most is what program do I use? Um, I use Adobe Audition version 1.5. Uh, there are newer versions of Adobe Audition out, but I uh, seem to have a lot of problems with the newer versions, also with other versions of, uh, or other software i just I, I can never get any of them to work properly this is the only one i've ever gotten to work properly uh, and i've always used this software right here since i've started and probably always be using it so that's what i use to record my stuff is adobe audition 1.5 now one of the first things that you're going to want to do when you get uh, audition is you're going to want to go into options settings and make sure mix downs says 32 bit track record mono 32 bit premixing 32 bit and hit okay now once you do that you won't ever have to do it again those settings will stay every time uh, you open up uh, audition so that's the only time you'll ever have to do that uh, another thing that you're going to want to do is uh, you always want to record your tracks in mono because it just gives you uh, a better clearer, more crisp sound uh, in your final product. So um, whatever time you start a new project, you're gonna wanna go into, uh, I've already have it changed, so it's gonna say something different, but this will normally say uh, out one and in one. So what you wanna do is go in where it says in one, or in one, the bottom button, click it, and then you click left channel, 32 bits, same for all tracks, okay. And that'll change that setting for every track that you have here. And then uh, you get into your mixing. Uh, basically, before uh, you do anything, um, there's not going to be anything here. I, as you can see, I already have a, a track here and, and a, a little vocal. Um, but one of the first things you're going to want to do is you're going to want to set up a noise profile so that when you do your cleanup, uh, and you do your noise reduction, the program knows what it's looking for, what you what you want to take out. Uh, one of the best ways to do that is just clear a space that you can record on, like right here, where there's no other sound, no nothing. Uh, make sure your room is as, or wherever you're recording at, make sure it's as silent as can be. Make sure there's no fans or anything blowing. Make sure it's as dead silent as possible. And then click record. And that's good right there so now you have double click it and now you have a little um, audio file here that's nothing but background noise now this is the noise that is in that is behind all of your vocals when you record this noise is always in there you want to get rid of that so what you're going to want to do is you select the little area of it that has nothing in it like the middle part right here and you listen to it hear that background static noise that's what you want to get rid of so you go up here you have three tabs files effects and favorites uh, go into your effects uh, tab hit noise reduction and then noise reduction down here double click it and then you want to hit capture profile and what that does is captures the sound that you have selected here which is the background noise and that's what you want to get rid of like I said um, and then depending on the quality of your microphone, you can adjust this uh, because you kind of have to find the right balance of noise removal and maintaining the quality of your vocals. Because if you have a really bad mic and you, you know, do, you know, all the way on high, you know, noise reduction, it's going to distort your vocals really badly. So you kind of got to play around with it and see what is the best fit for, you know, your equipment. Mine's generally about around here. I could do high, but I don't. I normally don't like to do uh, all the way so um, I generally have it like uh, about right there uh, and when you do this uh, you see this little box here at the bottom spectral decay rate uh, you're gonna uh, that's gonna be like at 65% or something by default now what you want to do is you want to erase that and uh, make it zero make sure that it's at zero percent because what that's gonna do um, when you do your noise removal, it's gonna give your vocals like a really robotic, uh, you know, uh, distortion noise to it. So you don't want that. Um, 
So you just basically just put spectral decay rate at 0%. And then that's pretty much all you have to do for this. So once you have that, click OK. Now the noise reduction feature has this profile saved into it. So now every time you run it, it won't mess with anything else in the track, just the background noise. And that's what you want to take out. So once you have that, you can just delete that um, file. Now what I have here is um, the song that I uploaded a couple days ago, the To My Fans song. Uh, and what I did was uh, I put the track back in there and um, I uh, recorded the first couple lines. So I'm gonna play this for you so that you can hear what the raw audio is, uh, is gonna sound like. I remember back when no one even knew a Seiko And nobody with big dreams and a bigger ego I used to watch them GG and Abandonation And I was filled with the fires of determination Alright, so that's what the raw audio sounds like um, So once you're, you know, once you're here and you got, you know, your raw audio and your, and your uh, instrumental What you're going to want to do is double click the vocal track and that'll bring you into the edit pane. Now you can always go back and forth. Uh, there's a tab up here. This is multi-track and edit view. Uh, you can, you know, you can do it just by highlighting whichever track you have highlighted. That's what's going to go into the edit pane. Uh, but like I said, you want your vocals, so you can just, you know, do that. Now the first thing that I do is I silence both sides uh, of the track, like this part and that part. Um, basically, the one of the reasons why you do that is um, because once you normally, at least in my songs, the way I record and I mix, uh, I lay a lot of tracks over each other, uh, like ad lib tracks um, and, you know, just copies of the same track and stuff like that to kind of change the, the uh, you know, the way my uh, vocals sound and everything. So this part um, will start to lay over each other and will get louder and louder. So you always want to silence this area right here. So all you do is you hold down left click, drag it over, right click, go down to silence. Same thing on this side, silence. Okay, now the next thing I do is I go into noise reduction because we already have the profile saved from what we did earlier. And then you just click OK. So that just took all the background noise out of that. And then you go to click pop eliminator, double click highlight hiss and lots of clicks and then hit find all levels and depending on your computer the quality of your mic and uh, you know if you have a pop filter or not a lot of things uh, are factors in this but this could potentially be a step that takes a lot of time but um, generally you know my stuff's pretty clean already so it doesn't take that much time and plus this track isn't really that long uh, but basically that just takes all, all the clicks and the pops, you know, like the, the P's and all that stuff like that uh, out of your track. And then the next thing I do is I go into filters, double click graphic equalizer. Now the setting that I always use is I go to pre-master EQ and then I hit 10 bands, one octave. And then that, that's what I use. I just use this, this preset. Um, a lot of people like to use um, this one right here, Spit Clear. This is another really good preset that you can use. This is basically a personal preference thing. You can, uh, you know, um, mess around with all of these presets. You know, take a look at all of them, see which ones. You know, some of them do weird effects and stuff like that. Uh, some of them are are for clarity and and whatnot. Um, and you can just you know pick a preset. You know, you can pick you know just one that you like out of this or you can kind of play around with the, you know, with the levels, you know, see, uh, you know, what makes your vocals sound sound best. Um, and if you do mess around with these and you find something that you like, you can always hit add, and then you just enter a name right here and hit OK, and it'll add that preset in here, and it'll always be there. So when next time that you do another song, um, you have the preset that you already, you know, designed yourself in there. But like I said, I always use pre-master EQ, 10 bands, one octave, and then hit OK. And then the next thing I do is I go to FFT filter, and then hit de-esser, and then OK. 
and then uh, this is a step that I normally don't do uh, a lot of people like to do it uh, in all their vocals and stuff like that and uh, for the most part it's a really good um, effect to put into your vocals depending on the song and and you know a lot of other things uh, but reverb well, basically you go into delay effects double click reverb and you have a bunch of reverb settings in here uh, presets that you can use and mess around with uh, basically for those of you who don't know what reverb is um, it basically adds like that echoey you know presence to your to your voice like for example if I hit tighten close and then preview you can hear uh, what it sounds like I remember back when no one even knew was seco and nobody with big dreams and a bigger ego so you see what it does um, again you can mess around with you know with all these little uh, buttons and stuff like that and find something that works best for you or if you just don't like or don't want to use reverb you don't have to it's not required um, but if you do that's where you can find it I'm gonna cancel that because I, I don't ever hardly ever use reverb unless it's like a like a, a hook or something like that something weird um, but my next step after uh, the FFT filter is I go to amplitude amplify fade and center wave and hit OK. Then I go into dynamics processing, which is probably one of the most important steps. Um, I have my preset in here that I use for everything. Um, I'll show you the settings for it so that you can uh, you can have this preset as well if you want, or you can again mess around with the uh, the ones that they have here. Now, first thing that you're going to want to do is go into the traditional tab. Make sure the first box says compress ratio negative 3.9 thresholds negative 20.2 and the next one down is expand 1.1 and then output compression gain 5.9 and then you go into attack release output gain 0 attack time 0 0.01 release time 100 input gain 0 and the rest of this should already be the same, should be default, but if not, you know, you can see here what it what it's supposed to be. And uh, band limiting, you don't really worry about that. So you go back to your graphic, and it's gonna look it's gonna look like this. And all you do is just hit uh, this button right here, splines, and uh, it'll give it that that little curve. And this is basically what you're gonna want it to end up looking like. And then that's my preset. So you just hit OK. And the last thing I do is normalize. This basically uh, just, you know, basically uh, brings the volume up or down on your vocals. Um, but it does it in such a way to where it kind of brings the low parts in your vocals up and kind of pushes down the high parts. Uh, dynamics processing also does something similar to that. Dynamics processing is more of like, uh, it gives that studio sound to it, you know, it, it, that compression sound to it. Um, normalizes more or less on the volume side of that. Uh, generally, I do something like, you know, maybe like 35 or something. I guess that would be good. You guys hear that train in the background? Asshole. Anyway, and that's the last thing I do is I normalize, and then that's the end of what I do to my vocals. That's generally what I do to all my vocals right there. So now you guys can hear the finished product. I remember back when no one even knew a seco And nobody with big dreams and a bigger ego I used to watch them GG and abandon nation And I was filled with the fires of determination You see how much better that sounds? Now, obviously it still doesn't sound finished and polished Obviously because it's just one track, it's just one vocal track uh, Generally I'll like, you know, I'll double this track right here To kind of give it a bigger sound Maybe turn it down a little bit so it doesn't get too loud And then, you know, I'll add a, a, another separate uh, track down here of like you know another recording to where it kind of doubles my voice a little bit gives it a, a more fuller sound and then I'll add my ad libs and everything and that's when you'll get your like finished sound you know that you hear in uh, in my songs but uh, you know for all the tracks that you do for everything that you mess around with that's how I do my vocals in Adobe Audition so I hope that this video was somewhat helpful to you guys I know that I that I've been stuttering a lot and 
you know, saying uh, a lot and all this crap. But I hope you learned something. Um, if you have any questions about uh, anything else related to this, uh, you can just put it in the comments and uh, I'll try to respond to you guys as soon as I can. If you have any questions on where to get Adobe Audition 1.5, um, for obvious reasons, I'm not gonna say it in this video or, or put it you know, somewhere public. So you can just PM me if you wanna know where to get this program. Uh, I can um, tell you where you can go to get it. And um, that's pretty much it. So again, I hope you guys learned something and uh, I'll see you guys next time.